This won't be a professional video, but I'll attempt to quickly show how to install these motors uh, and belts uh, for the drivetrain. It can be tricky. It took me a while to sort of figure it out. And what I do is I get a little solid wire uh, piece first, and I'll, I'll show uh, how I use this solid wire. But the leads to the end motor should be stranded, and they also should be uh, tinned, and we'll show that. Now I use 20 or 22 gauge silicon coated wire, and it's very easy to strip. You can strip with these types of uh, tools, but you gotta be very careful not to nick it. So you wanna go through the insulation just a bit and pull off. Now, if you know the, these strippers are very good ensuring that these teeth are clean in here and there's no other pieces or bits of past wires, but you can also, these work really well as well. And you want to start with the largest one that may, or as large as you can, and that will also strip really well. Now don't even think of using wire that's not tinned. So I basically have made a 3D printed little uh, widget here to hold these things. I use 3663 lead solder because it flows better. Uh, 6337 is called eutectic solder. And I have a temperature controlled solder iron. I think it was $100, but for soldering, I find it's really useful. You have a little pad. I, I don't like the uh, uh, metal uh, the metal things you push this in. It tends to wear the coating off, but a little wet sponge that you grab and sort of shake the solder off is really good. Now you put a little solder on the tip just to coat it put it under the wire, the solder on the other side, and you run that just up and down. You want a thin coating, not a big coating. And you do that to both sides. So that's now properly prepared. I'll get my solid wire here. Again, you want to be very careful not to nick it because once you nick it, flexes it all, it'll break, but we're just going to cut a little piece of solid wire here. And we're going to loop it around these little holes. So the wire I've used is the type of wire you'll find in, uh, this came from a network cable, uh, not a patch cable, but like a Cat5 cable that would go in the walls. Those are solid wires. and You just take that out and you can get all kinds of free uh, solid wire that uh, you can you can get. And what you want to do here is you want to make a little loop. So I basically am going to twist this wire around something small. It can be a toothpick to give me a little loop, a fairly small loop. And I'll trim this off later. So now I've got, if you can see here, a little loop that I can solder to. And I'm going to take, and you can notice on here, there is a plus and a minus on the end. And I'm going to put the minus in there. And I'm going to bend this pretty close to here. Now, the hard thing is you want this oriented so it comes off at uh, 90 degrees this way because you're gonna put the motor in and you don't want too much back here uh, sticking out. So you want this fairly flush. So I use it hanging down and I've gotten, I used to do this professionally, but um, as I retired, I lost all my gear, but you can buy just a ton of stuff from AliExpress to help with this type of thing for very cheap, which is basically what I did. So now I've got this, if you can, hopefully you can see this, hanging straight down.
and you've got your wire tin so that's going to really help you don't need to heat that up very much but the hard part is now trying to get everything sort of soldered together without too much heat being applied so when i pull this down a little bit pull it to the tab and you want this to be really tight so you hold it down while it solidifies and you should get a really tight uh, a really tight connection here now my solder iron is at uh, 360 degrees C now solder melts at about 180 you may think that's very hot but for professional rework you want uh, you want to heat the joint up very fast and uh, very quickly so you can get the solder on so that's a common uh, that's a very common temperature to use for rework and now with good and you need the right tools with good needle nose pliers you're going to cut all those excess little pieces off which i say I like this here and you're going to perform the same thing on the other side and that's a really tight connection that's not going to come off as I say this needs to be stranded wire so it can flex on the other end before you uh, you're going to trim that and you're going to put that into your terminal block but you're also going to tin the uh, tin the ends as well and put them in the terminal block. Now there's some people who will say don't tin ends and put them under pressure but for this little uh, project that'll be fine. Now getting these on here can be a little difficult. I've got a remix called the Rubber Remix, and what I've done is make made these a little larger. Instead of 3.15, I've made them 3.35. Uh, and you've got to make sure the flat part of this lines up with the flat part in here, which is hard to tell at times. Now I also have a couple pair of glasses from the dollar store, I've got a 3X glasses, which are a little easier to see. And if you have some, if you have some plastic in there, it helps to ream that out with a, a drill a little bit, just to get any plastic bits. You can't have any obstructions as you're putting this in, it just won't go in. So I can see the flat spot in there. Now there's a couple ways that you can get this in. It should sort of slide in, but there's a great little tool like this that can help with that. And so we're going to open this wide and press this, but you gotta be careful about this end. The other uh, thing that I do with, uh, sometimes with a hammer, is I'll just gently tap, and maybe the hammer process is what I'll use here is you can see i'm going to put uh, a piece of metal in through here it's going to protect the ends i'm just going to lightly tap on this now you want that pretty well flush i'm not going to pound it down because I'm, that's not the uh, pulley i'm actually going to uh, to use I want to save this motor, so I'll cut that off later. But that uh, is how you uh, start the first uh, first motor. And a little gentler way, instead of hammer, uh, once it's certainly in a bit, is to protect, again, protect the end. Don't do this just like this, but put something uh, underneath it, a little piece of toothpick or something, so that this can go against here. And you can pull this in uh, this way with one of these uh, types of pliers. Now, once you have your motors all prepped, here is a housing. Now I have a remix housing that uh, 
this was the original housing that has a couple posts in through here which help guide the belt that is the the belt will go against it and it won't come out so if you find your belts wandering off that may help but having thicker clips 1.4 millimeters helps and I will say having a pair of calipers really helps and you can get plastic I ordered a five dollar pair of calipers from AliExpress and they are invaluable they're cheap but they work fine um, so the very first thing however is to put the non uh, the non motor pulleys in I can't remember which way this goes this motor I think this motor goes in this way so it's really important to put in so this is not one of the new pulleys but the new pulleys this will go in a little tighter let's see if this one is one of the new ones my remix my pulleys are a little tighter so you want to sort of grab it like this and you'll put that in and you'll just leave that end up and then what you'll do is you'll put a c-clip in here to hold this in okay so and you need to do that on both of the non-motor sides so just as a demonstration i'm going to put this in pretend there's a belt around i only have one free belt this is the 1.4 clip right. and these clips are hard as hell to get off so you want to make sure you do this in the right order okay so and you shouldn't have a lot of you don't want too much pull, play in through here that's why my remix i made the tolerance it's a little tighter in through here so you have both of these installed. So we'll put our clip on here to hold this. Now these are old parts, they're stretched and a little wobbly, but you want that in there uh, easily. Now, now that you've got both those non-pulleys, you can take this motor and you want to first put it around the pulley and then holding that on and keeping it flat you can slide that um, should have been doing it. yeah no that's right you can slide that into that opening now no question this is tricky so let's see if and you can see that almost is there and you see that it's a little twisted but it's still around there which is good and as you sort of pull this up and through this motor that i happened to do the demo on was a six volt and only a five rpm so there's an extra gear in here which means it's longer you won't have this problem and i'll show you a three volt 30 or a six volt 60 the same thing these are the dry train you can go six volt 100 i think that's what's sent but if you compare these, you'll see that the one at the top, quite a few millimeters uh, difference in size. And you'll notice these leads are coming off here. So we're going to install this on the proper motor. And we'll show what happens. Remember, I said to protect this end. So. so there, we've got a, a newer one all ready to go to show you. We'll take our housing here. It only takes a millimeter or two, and you put this in. So 
So now you're going to take this around here like this. And you're going to slide that into, and make sure it's still around the pulley. And that will have enough play to slide in. And then you can move this forward. By just sort of pushing on here. Like that. So that comes through. And you want to put a clip right on this. And before you start this up, make sure you put that cover across there or this will just wind around. But you can see why these need to come out at right angles now. Now, once you have this installed, the other motor will go in uh, just as easy. You have the right motor. And before you do anything else, plug these in with both polarities to some type of battery source and just ensure your belt goes around these and it doesn't uh, doesn't run off. And, uh, and once you have these working, this is generally the toughest part of the design. Everything else goes smooth.